Kia ora, hello, I'm Philip Duncan and thanks for joining us for our Friday update for April the 14th. We are tracking a tropical cyclone in Australia and an anti-cyclone in New Zealand and we kick off with the anti-cyclone, the high pressure zone. This is going to be New Zealand's main weather feature for the next week ahead, next seven days ahead. It's going to be parked out to the east, it's getting a little more powerful and it's working in tandem with this low pressure zone out on the Tasman Sea. And that creates what we call a squash zone. And those northeast winds will become stronger in the days ahead. And as the high gets stronger and moves a little bit further out to our east, it will pull down this subtropical airflow and bring it down over New Zealand. In Australia, we've got uh, Cyclone Elsa. It made landfall just a few hours before we recorded this video. It's already broken records. It reached category five yesterday, the highest uh, level, and it matched the Atlantic Category 5 for their hurricanes. So certainly a powerful storm, and it broke uh, wind records. The preliminary uh, wind gust, or wind, uh, sustained wind, I should say, not a gust, sustained wind for 10 minutes was 218, 218 kilometers an hour, smashing the previous record from 2007, I believe, which was only into the 190 kilometer an hour range. So certainly a record broken and more likely to be broken as Elsa moves on through and falls apart over the next 24 hours. And the last feature, look at this big southerly coming in. Uh, Perth your, and Fremantle, your temperatures will be down as will the rest of the southwestern corner of Western Australia as that southerly comes in and from very close to the Antarctic ice shelf. Now, very far away from Antarctica and the Tasman Sea, we've got the solo trans-Tasman yacht race carrying on. It just left from New Plymouth and they're heading off towards Brisbane. Now, we've got that low pressure zone in the Tasman producing some larger waves. This is what you're seeing on the map here. Uh, the waves in pink are the larger ones. So windy nor'easters, that'll be helping the yachts move along to Australia, as well as those big strong winds coming through Cook Strait, uh, producing these very big waves which are now south of them and behind them. But certainly that's an interesting race to keep an eye on if you're tracking uh, it. And if you're not, just Google those words there, Solo Trans Tasman Yacht Race, and you'll be able to find it very quickly. Let's have a look now at the cyclone, Elsa. Uh, this was how it was captured this morning, around about 7 o'clock New Zealand time, 5 o'clock in the morning in Sydney, and it was uh, 3 o'clock in the morning over near Port Hedland. You can see the centre of the storm very clearly there, that's the eye. Uh, rain radar showing some very heavy rain around it, starting to break up though, and thunderstorms to the north there. And like I say, it will move inland, almost uh, eastwards, as we go through Friday and into Saturday. Bit of a southeast lean to it. And this is the rain map. Now, huge amounts of rain for this part of Australia. This does happen from time to time, but you're going to have more than, well, Put it this way, probably be about half a year worth of rain, half a year to three quarters of a year's worth of rain in just a day or two. So that's quite a lot coming through and it tapers off really as you come in towards Alice Springs. So here we are on Saturday, can't really see the leftovers of the low, but the low is still there, just north of Alice Springs, um, spinning away but falling apart. It's really now just a rain event for them, bringing in some much needed rain and to the south, that windier, more autumn-like weather that is coming into Adelaide, Melbourne, and into Hobart as well. On the other side of the Tasman Sea, it's also windy. Uh, Norwest is over here on this corner, northeasterlies for the New Zealand side, and that low slowly dropping southwards. But up here in the tropics, another one to keep an eye on, around Vanuatu, the Solomon Islands area, that's going to deepen on Sunday a little bit further. There's another low next to it, so these two are sort of working in tandem. That's still the energy a little bit off each other. The high in the New Zealand area getting bigger and stronger and pushing back. So those northeasterly winds become stronger as well. And over here in Melbourne and Hobart, in comes that cold front, fairly weak, and it falls apart by the time it reaches Sydney. By Monday, the next high is coming through. So things are settling down right across Aussie. But in the New Zealand area, we've got a storm down here, or a low pressure zone anyway, down in the Southern Ocean, and then another two lows to the north. So a lot of low pressure out here between the two highs. That's quite normal as we go through the, the seasons of autumn and spring. Um, in winter, we tend to get a lot more low pressure, and in summer, a lot more high pressure. And in the spring and autumn seasons, you get a bit more of an even mix between highs, lows, and highs. And that's what we're seeing at the moment. So next week, with all that low pressure to the north of New Zealand, that encourages this wet weather 
on the backside of the high pressure zone. So the anticyclone's out here, but it's bringing air flows from the Cook Islands, Tonga, and even around Fiji down into the New Zealand area. So next week, well above average temperature wise, daytime and nighttime. Places in the south that would normally be seeing frosts are going to have double digit overnight lows as those northerly quarter winds come through. And no real change as we go through the week, except that on Wednesday, the high moves further out to the east. And so therefore the rain slides in. Those showers and wet weather that have been hanging around the back end of that high finally move in to the New Zealand area. And by Thursday next week, the high in Australia pushes in and kicks away most of that northeasterly flow. It still remains um, a northerly flow. Northwest is a bit more developing around the North Island. And behind it in the south, west to southwest winds. And they dominate the weather as we go through uh, the week after, the last week of April. We're going to be seeing a lot more of our weather coming out of the Indian, uh, Indian Ocean, the Southern Ocean. I mean, the Indian Ocean is producing these highs, but the weather in the last week of April will be from the Southern Ocean up into New Zealand. Westerlies and Southwesterlies are the forecast. So I guess make the most of next week, which will be warmer than average in New Zealand. That is all from me. Have a great weekend. We'll see you again on Monday.